Hey there, and welcome back to Binary Tech Labs. In this video, we're diving into the world of power monitoring systems. And trust me, it's a topic worth exploring. Do you want to save money on your energy bills and help the Earth? Well, let me explain a little bit more about power monitoring systems. These systems typically have more than one power meter for accuracy, and they help you to keep track of how much energy you're using. You don't have to have more than one meter, this will depend, of course, on how accurate you need the results. For my use case, I just want to know more about where, when, and how my energy is being used and which loads are consuming it. So what exactly are power monitoring systems made of? Typically, they consist of three main components. A metering device to capture the raw data, software to collect and display the data, and a communication interface between the software and metering devices. In this video, I'll break down these components in more detail and show you how they work together to help you save money and reduce your environmental impact. We have a lot of ground to cover, so let's get started. All right, so using a power monitoring system helps you to see how much energy is being used. That way you can make changes to use less energy and save you money. However, it's important to keep safety in mind when working with or near energized equipment, especially at the mains level. Qualified electricians should be the ones to install and service this type of equipment as they are familiar with the potential hazards and how to protect against shock and thermal burns. Don't take unnecessary risks. If you're not trained to handle energized equipment, leave it to the professionals. So what are our requirements? Well, aside from home assistant, and the ESP Home integration, which really isn't a requirement as this can be done from their website, we'll need to gather some materials and tools before we can build this. Here's a list of what you'll need. A CT clamp, a D1 Mini, a D1 Mini power sensor module, a 3D case, micro USB data cable, an AC-DC clamp meter, borrow one if you need to, optionally, the PZEM-004T voltage sensor. Okay, so let's talk about the components that I had mentioned earlier. The first component used to monitor and measure energy usage, and there are several device options available, including split core transformers, or CTs, and solid core CTs. For this demonstration, I'll be using a split core CT because it can be safely installed without removing mains level wiring and has a Zener diode to protect against open circuits. I discovered Motrum Labs on GitHub while researching ESP devices and I want to share their handy daughter boards for easy CT connection and measurement. It includes a burden resistor, a schematic for you to make your own using KiCad if you choose, and a link to a 3D printed housing file that you can either print yourself or have printed by a service. To measure power, current and voltage inputs are needed. This is where the PZEM-004T voltage sensor comes into play as it can measure AC voltage up to 250 volts which can be used as the voltage reference that we need. This device can also measure current but I like the Motrum Labs option better. Plus, overall, this is a cheaper option for multiple circuits. For the demonstration, I will not be using the PZM-004T module. I will just hard code the voltage level. But if you do use it, remember you only need one for your voltage reference. For the software component, it's important to use the right tools for effective energy usage monitoring and analysis. Fortunately, there are many excellent software options available for data collection and display, but of course, I will be discussing Home Assistant as we see. A comprehensive platform that brings all your energy data together in one place, allowing you to monitor real-time data or track trends over time. Another option to add on top of this is Grafana. It's a visualization tool that makes sense of data graphically. Although not covered in this video, it is a valuable consideration for advanced energy monitoring over longer periods of time, as Home Assistant will only hold about 30 days in its database, and then that gets erased. Setting up Home Assistant is easy. Simply follow the instructions on their main website. 
So the final component in our energy monitoring is connecting Home Assistant to our metering device. This is where ESP Home comes in. It's a powerful platform that makes it simple to program your device and integrate it with Home Assistant. Just open up your web browser and head over to esphome.io. It's a comprehensive resource with ample documentation and sample YAML code. Its user-friendly design makes it easy to use, especially for non-programmer savvy individuals. It's the missing piece of our energy monitoring puzzle and will allow us to take control of our energy usage and start saving money. As always, to make sure that we're all on the same page, we're gonna look at the versions of Home Assistant and ESP Home that I'm using. So current version I'm running for my Home Assistant instance at the time of recording. You can find yours by going to settings, about, and here they're listed here. And for ESP Home, all we have to do is go back to settings, and then on add-ons, click on ESP Home, and here we see the current version of ESP Home that I'm running. Okay, so now that we have everything to set up our power monitoring system, we are ready to start collecting data. Oh, but wait, first we have to program our D1 Mini. As I already alluded to, I will be using ESP Home, which takes care of the heavy lifting for us. To use ESP Home, you're gonna to need to create a YAML configuration file, which is also known as a node, which contains the necessary configurations for our power monitoring. ESP Home components act as building blocks that we can use to construct our templates. Check out the link to my GitHub repository for the YAML configuration files that you need. My aim here is to empower you with the knowledge and skills to complete these tasks with ease. In my YAML files, I've included references to relevant documentation for easy problem solving. If you're measuring voltage with the voltage sensor module, make sure to use the CT sensor voltage YAML file instead of the CT sensor YAML file. To get started, copy the text from the appropriate file and open up the ESP Home dashboard, as you see here. Let's just get rid of this. So as you can see, I've already been kind of playing around with these, but the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is click on the new device here. And then we're gonna go through this wizard. So we're just gonna hit continue and we're going to give it a name here and choose a name that makes sense for your project, such as fridge CT sensor, if you're working on a CT sensor for your fridge. So I will just put CT for the example, uh, sorry, fridge CT sensor. Click next. Now here for your select your device type, it doesn't really matter because if you're using the D1 mini, everything's gonna be replaced anyway. And now for this next part, we're just gonna hit skip. As I was saying, the important thing to have is this node listed on the dashboard so we can replace everything in the file. Now keep in mind that you're going to need to program this node via USB for the first time, but any subsequent updates can be done over the air or OTA or wirelessly. Okay, so you've gone over to my GitHub page and you've copied out all this information that you're going to need. So let's explain this a little bit. So here I'm using some substitutions such as device name, voltage and update interval. And here you can see that everywhere it says dollar sign device name, it's going to replace it with CT sensor. And here you may want to change this to the fridge-ct sensor if you want, or you can just leave it as CT sensor. It's up to you. As I said, I am not going to be using the voltage reference module. So I am hard coding this voltage value in here. And the rest of this stuff here all comes pretty standard with all the nodes in ESP Home and these OTA password and your Wi-Fi credentials. As you see here, it says secret. So to get to that, you would just click on the secrets here and enter that information in there. 
Now, as it says here, the name, this is the name that's going to show up in Home Assistant. So I'm just calling it measured power. You can say fridge power or whatever it is that you are monitoring. And the icon that I'm using is here. The unit of measurement is watts. And this part here, the accuracy decimals. This is just so that Home Assistant, when it's being displayed, only shows whole numbers and not decimals. The decimals will still show up in your database, but on the Home Assistant page, it'll just be a whole number. So here there's some filters to calibrate our sensor and a Lambda function to return our value. I was noticing that mine was bouncing a little bit. So I have an if statement here that if the value is above this 0 0.01, it will return the value times my voltage to give us our watts. Otherwise it returns a zero. And this part here is just for the voltage source sensor on the daughter board for Motrum Labs. And as you can see for all of these components here, I have included links. So you just have to control click on the link to follow it to get to the information to read up about it. So let's go ahead and install this. So as I said, for your first time, you're going to have to either plug it into the computer that you're working off of that is displaying your home assistant web page, or you can plug it into your device that is running the ESP home dashboard. And in this case, it's the Raspberry Pi. But because I have done this before, I'm just going to click this wirelessly and it's going to go ahead and install that program. Now, the first time it builds this, it does take a little bit of time because it has to download these components and then it will build it and upload it, but subsequent uploads will take about this amount of time. So once it has connected to the device, I will just bring the video right back. Okay, so it's just about to connect to Home Assistant and we'll see that here very shortly. There we go. And now it's bringing back some measurements. So the first thing we're gonna do is hit stop. And at this point, you will have seen it pop up with a notification saying it found a new de device. But as I said, because I've done this before, it's not showing it. So if I go over to settings and then click on devices, we can see that my CT sensor has been discovered. Uh, another way that you can add this if it doesn't happen to find it is just click on add integration, type ESP home, and then set up another instance and give the IP address of the new device. So we'll just hit configure, which is going to tell us that we're going to bring that into Home Assistant, select your area, and then click finish. And now we have our sensor in Home Assistant. So on the dashboard, because I've taken control of it, nothing shows up. So I'm just going to edit it and add by the entity. And we had said it was measured power. So there is our entity. So I will just add it to the dashboard and there we go. Okay, so now that we have our sensor integrated into Home Assistant, we're going to need to calibrate our sensor. So in order to calibrate it, we're going to go back into ESP Home and we're going to edit and we're going to scroll down to the filters and all the way down to the end here and we're just going to cut that out. And then we're going to save. And then we're going to wirelessly now, because you've already done it once, wirelessly upload that to our sensor. And then this is where the ACDC clamp meter with a line splitter is going to come in. And you can make your own line splitter with an extension cord and extension cord ends and just strip some wires. You can ask your electrician to make this for you, but the black wire should be connected to the gold or brass terminal. The white wire should be connected to the silver terminal and the green wire should be connected to the green terminal. So to test our device, 
we're going to need something with a steady current draw, such as a lamp. So first, we just want to get our measured power from our CT clamp when it is off. And then we'll let a couple of these values come in. And here you can see it kind of fluctuates. So here it was reporting 0 0.001. And here it's reporting 0 0.000. And it's outputting this measured power, sending this state to Home Assistant. So now that we have our zero reading, the next thing we wanna do is turn on our device so that we get what its current draw is. And now with our current draw on, we can see that we are receiving a value here. So we'll just let a couple of those readings come in. And now we're going to download the logs and we'll just open those up so that we have them and we'll hit stop. So now back in our node here, we'll go back to edit and we will put that filter and lambda expression back in. So here is what we measured, 0 0.001, and that's going to map to a zero value. And this is where the ACDC clamp meter comes in, because we saw that we were drawing about 5.7 amps, and our reading was 0 0.019, which if we go to the logs here, we see that here, 0 0.019. So perfect, now that we have these settings in here, our sensor is calibrated, we'll just click save, and one last time, click install. All right, so now that we have finished calibrating our device, you can install it in an electrical panel if that's where you're going to be capturing your measurements. Just turn it on and verify that Home Assistant is receiving your readings, and you can also add this consumption to your energy tab if you'd like. So if we just go back out of here and go back to our dashboard, here we can see we are getting some energy readings from our device. And I'm actually using a toaster, so as soon as the toaster stops, we'll see this return back to zero. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it informative and useful. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel to support the creation of future videos. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you have any comments or thoughts to share, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for your time, and I hope to see you in future videos. Goodbye.